Thank you and good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to be here, present, and, and get the honor to open this session, which I think is really important because when you're talking about well-being and well-being economy, sometimes, just sometimes, the municipalities get a little bit uh, forgot. Um, I'm the chairman for the Icelandic Association of local authorities in Iceland. And just to begin with, uh, we have these two government uh, uh, levels. We have the state and the municipalities. And in Iceland, even though we are not that many that live in this beautiful island, uh, we have 64 municipalities, uh, which makes it, of course, uh, really uh, wide variety of municipalities because we are only 360,000, 70,000, somewhere there at the whole. So we have one municipality who has a bigger population than 100,000 and, and yeah, the median size is about 1,200 people. But we do a lot and, and we sometimes say we collect about 10% of GDP in our taxes and we are uh, responsible for one third of the pu public expenditure. And we employ like 10% of the working force in Iceland. So we are like the biggest uh, employee, we, we have all the biggest companies. We are the biggest uh, companies in the, in, the, in the country. And we are quite uh, autonomy. So we, 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 are, we are decide ourselves uh, quite much. Even though, of course, we have to follow the law that the government says us to do, we, we are uh, like, uh, like it should be. We can do. We, we are locally elected and, and we have this local government. So what are we doing then with all this money and all this stuff? Uh, I sometimes say almost everything that matters for people who live here, but not everything because we don't have the health care. Uh, and we don't have uh, like uh, the main roads, or we don't have the laws, the parliament. The, there is a lot of things. We don't have the judge, uh, the judges, and, and all that. But we we take care of that the sanitation, that you have clean water, that you, that you have houses, you have warm houses, uh, the waste management, uh, the spatial training, which is of planning, which is of course really important because that is your the, the place where you spend your all, all your days. <laughs> we take uh, we are responsible for the education of of youth, uh, at least until they are 16 years old, and uh, it is our responsibility that the social services for those who need that uh, are in place. So we are like always making the society a little bit more, more just and more fair. And we, we, we have the leisure and the sports and, and a lot, a lot of things. And you can see here, like, uh, the, the far biggest uh, task that we have is education and, and everything regarding youth. So we have this, like, you, you need a town to, to raise a child, and we say, well, yeah, the municipalities are that town, and that is our main, main focus. But then, of course, now, more and more, we are thinking about environment, uh, this sustainability, uh, and things like that. And that, of course, also uh, leads us to the well-being of people and... and if we need more social services or, or things like that. So it's, it's, all a, it's all a circle. And we always use this picture, and I think uh, when you think about municipalities and this, this picture, you see that we are in all the, all the circles. Because in one or another way, we are like, we, we, we help you, maybe not with your age or sex, but we help you with all the others, all the surroundings in your uh, environment both the social, we, we, we try to make the individual choice easier so that it's good for you. And, and of course, 
with education, living and work conditions, and and of, of course we have a, a huge say also in the just the culture and, and general socioeconomic surroundings. So um, almost everything that we do in the municipalities is actually re, uh, linked to the health and well-being of our people. Sometimes uh, that is maybe not so easily seen, and as a president for the local authorities, I'm usually more, mostly asked about money, how it is for us to, to pay for all the costs, and if you, are, if you are costing too much or, or if it's okay. Not so often about the well-being, so that is maybe something that we should think more about. Um, and we are, of course, doing that in the municipalities. And I think that we know maybe better than anyone how the situation is and how people are feeling. Uh, we feel it, uh, we are so close to the uh, in inhabitants that we like feel it directly to our service people if there is something happening. We feel it in our schools, we feel it in our kindergartens, in our social services, in our elderly uh, day care institutions, just in the libraries, swimming pools, everywhere. So we, we are like really close to the people. And we have been measuring, of course, uh, like they talked about yesterday, uh, and the Directorate of Health have, has been measuring a lot for us. So we, of course, see that too. And we have been thinking like we are better off than ever. We have we are really uh, we we have never had it so good in Iceland. Actually, maybe 2007, but, but that was a little bit myth. So, um, but what is it? Why why are then not everybody feeling better? Because we also see like more anxiety, uh, people feeling isolated and not that happy. And we have been like measuring. Uh, maybe not the right things. So we have also been discussing that and, and taking a little bit part in that uh, what Icelandic government has been doing. The state government, that is. Not the local governments. Uh, so we have been like also thinking, like, is it, is it sustainable to like, continue watching this money talk always and how we are growing and how many people we have uh, as employees and and the grades from the kids, we have, we have many measurements, but, but like, is it sustainable? Is it going to, to continue like this? So, um, and we in the, in my association for the local authorities, we have been like discussing, uh, should we help the municipalities to measure something more? Should we help them to also, not, not just to measure, to, to like get like the, what, what, does it, what does it say to you? Are you on the right track? What is the main goal? Is it like good or bad? And, and, and what should you be measuring or looking into? Because sometimes when we get those results from measurements, they, it, it is a lot of, lot of data. And, and if you are in a municipality somewhere out in the country, you don't really know maybe how, what to look for. And, and now we have to like incorporate the state of environment, equality, also health, because even though we don't have the healthcare, we have everything to do with health of the people. Happiness, uh, education level, trust. I mean, we see lack of trust really often. This is all something that we should maybe measure, and we think we should measure, and we should be able to, to see that uh, uh, that we are getting progress as a municipality if these numbers go up. So we have been looking into this well-being uh, measurements, and I'm going to tell you a little bit like how we have uh, started to measure that. But we are maybe, I know this is a, a, a whole uh, circular approach, and we are thinking about the earth, and we are thinking about the future and how we are going to, to leave our country to the next generation and, and all that. But, but in, a, in a nutshell, I think it's a lot about like building connections and just, just being delivering fairness and justice and that people feel that they are treated like everyone else, that you are as important as everyone else. 
And, and this, this dignity is something that we in the municipalities are always talking. We, are, we of course, are, we, we have to serve everyone. Everyone uh, has this dignity for all persons. And we think this is like, this is like the municipality's task, that we, we are connecting people. We are making the space. We are making the space and the places for people to connect. And that's, that's why you should also like measure that. So we do this with the planning, with the social protection, with the empowering people, with the local democracy, like direct voting for, for if you, this road should be here and there, inclusion, like all that. So we have like many opportunities to do this. And most of the uh, municipalities, as you probably heard yesterday, are actually taking part in some of this. So health promoting communities, we are almost all the municipalities are taking part in, in that. I think it's like 96% of the population is, is living in a health promoting municipality or community. And that is of course helping us a lot. And we get some measurements from that, not for every municipality, but, but for, a, for a part of the city. And I think we have to like take that measurements more into the policy making uh, arena. And we are of course uh, willing and open for any suggestions regarding that. We are also of course using the sustainable uh, development goals. We have been working on that with the uh, state government. Uh, to try to, to make it easier for the municipalities to adopt the SDGs. It's, it's a little bit hard maybe in some, some communities, but it's not like, it's not that the biggest are best and the smaller are worse, not at all. It's, it's also because of different interests and, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure what it depends on uh, because we have like a, a municipality with 700 people who is one of the yeah, foremost in, in this area, and, and then we have the biggest one who is like uh, behind. But of course, what, when we ask them, they say we need more human resources, people that know this, and we need more money to be able to, to fulfill this and, and do it well. Uh, but we have uh, two municipalities who use the SDGs like di directly in their budget work. We have also this social progress index, and uh, it's one way of measuring. And we have some municipalities, three large municipalities, who are using that like directly in their budgeting, and they are monitoring like monitored by the by the index in, in Iceland. So this is of course something that we have been doing, um, but I'm not sure if it's enough. And I think we need more tools, and I think we need, need like to make this uh, more adaptable for the municipalities. And we have been trying to open that discussion and I hope that I will learn something from you today about how we could do that. Because I think it would be easier for Iceland, this small, uh, not small island, because it's a big island with a small population, uh, if we could like have it a little bit similar in all the municipalities. So we could like also uh, benchmark with each other. So, I think that uh, now, when we, uh, we, when we sit with our budget and our yearly, we sit with that now, we are deciding the next year. We have the numbers, we have the numbers of the things that go into our budget, and we have the numbers that we expect to come out. So we are going to serve like 300 disabled people or 2,000 elderly and uh, Ruru, I mean, so many children in the school are supposed to be there and, uh, and we are always measuring like input and output and see, but we may be not always measuring the outcome, like what did they really feel in the school? How, how are the disabled people, are they, do they feel that they are a part of the society? Do they feel that it's okay? The services and is the environment like are, are we are we are we using the earth too much? Are we like taking from it and not like in, in the end of the year? If that is the if that is the case, like we know it is the case, is then the budget like really what matters? Of course, the budget matters because we cannot spend more money than we have. But like, are we measuring what what is the most important? And I think we are maybe maybe like some people say in gender equality. 
which I, I am also a uh, big uh, campaigner for, we are, we, we are always collecting like hats and we are always collecting data about amounts, but maybe not quality and, and, and well-being. So I think we have to uh, do that in order to be able to use the money that we have to find the cost-effective ways to maximize the well-being for all our citizens, for all our people. Uh, and I told you, we have a lot of measurements. I mean, we, we have so many measurements, really, but uh, we maybe not know how to do it. And I just wanted to tell you, because what we have been started to do now in cooperation with the government is like also measure social investment. Uh, for us who are uh, maybe more in that field, that we, we want to see the social investment like investment. This is quite new data. We, we, uh, the municipality for, for children, uh, the, the government, the minister for, for uh, children, uh, measured the uh, outcome, the cost benefit analysis about changing the service for, for, for children here that we would make it more like um, a whole society approach and change like all the system. And if we would do that, what effect would that like in a cost have on Iceland like in the long term? And we saw that we, the cost benefit analysis uh, so that we would get a return on to society of 11%, which made it a really good investment. It is even better investment than, than Kárnjúkar, which is one of our biggest, biggest uh, horrible thing in, in, the, in the country. It's really important, but, but not so beautiful and really debated. But I think no one debates that we want our children to be happy and to be able to, to learn and, and educate themselves and, and fulfill their dreams. But we have like, never really before uh, went in and, and seen, is it cost beneficially? And we did that now also with elderly people uh, quite recently, two, two weeks ago. And we are trying to do this more and more, to, to like, uh, analyze the, the cost benefit of also uh, the social services and the social integrations that we have. But of course, it's a never ending story. It's a never ending process and we are on the way. And I think that uh, we want most of us, and at least the local authorities association has been working on this with a small task force, especially regarding the SDGs. We want to make we want to make a shift, but we really are not quite sure how to do it. Um, and we are campaigning for that to get more support and to be able to because we also see. I I, I fully agree, and I love the. Uh, the focus the Prime Minister of Iceland has, has put into the well-being economy, and I think it's really important. But I think Iceland will not succeed and not get close to their goals if they don't have the municipalities with them, and I think they have to be more visible and, and it has to be made easier for them to measure their own path and if they are developing in the right direction. So we are, of course, willing but as, as it is, not entirely able, but we are getting there. Thank you.